All right, you made it to our last video on memory. Now, this is not the last video of the unit, but it is the last one where we'll solely focus on memory. In this video, we are going to be talking about forgetting memories and other memory challenges. Wait, what are we gonna talk about in this video? What are you doing? Yeah, I was not paying attention at all. Uh, but I'd like to know what we're doing. Forgetting memories. I literally just said that. Sounds good. So it turns out that over time, our memory can fade, become distorted, and fail altogether. Now there is a variety of reasons for why a memory would fail or start to fade. For starters, we can actually look at the encoding process. If information wasn't encoded properly in the first place, it may never make it into long-term memory. Oftentimes this happens because we were not focused when trying to encode the information. When our attention is split, it becomes harder to encode the information. Like for example, when you're studying for a test, texting on your phone, and have Netflix up in the background. Something that I'm sure you've never done before, and definitely are not doing right now. Looking at you. Now, encoding may have also failed because we were only processing information at the shallowest level, focusing on surface details instead of making those deeper connections that we talked about in our last video. Sometimes the information is encoded, but we'll actually still struggle to think of the information, resulting in inadequate retrieval. For instance, the tip of the tongue phenomenon, which is when you know something, but you can't quite think of the exact item or name. You know that feeling when you're talking with your friends about the movies that you watched over the summer and there's that one movie that you really loved and it was a Pixar movie there were some emotions or something there was a kid they were from Minnesota and you can remember the plot but for some reason you just can't think of the title. Now, unfortunately, even if you encode the information correctly, we can see that information still can be blocked from being retrieved. Old information that you learn can sometimes get in the way of learning something new, or new information can actually push old information out. This is known as interference, and it can take two forms, proactive and retroactive. Proactive interference occurs when older memories interfere with the recall of newer memories. For example, let's say you're trying to remember your password for your College Board account, but for some reason you keep typing last year's password instead of the new one that you just created. On the other hand, there's also retroactive interference, and this occurs when newer memories interfere with the recall of older memories. For instance, let's say you get a new class schedule for the new semester and are so excited, but then your friend asks you about last semester and you're actually having trouble remembering your exact class order. When trying to remember the difference between proactive and retroactive interference, just remember that proactive is forward acting and retroactive is backwards acting. Now, speaking of memories being blocked, another type of memory challenge is what psychodynamic theorists like Freud call repression. Freud argued that some memories actually aren't forgotten because of normal memory failure, but instead it's because the mind is actively pushing them out of our conscious awareness. In other words, the memory is still there, but it's being buried. Repression usually happens when memories are distressing or anxiety provoking. So the mind blocks them as a way to actually protect the self. To understand why Freud thought this happens, we'll, we need to take a look at his model of personality. He believed that our personality was shaped by three parts, the id, the superego, and the ego. The id lives in the unconscious and demands instant gratification of our basic drives, like hunger or pleasure. The superego, on the other hand, represents our moral standards and ideals, almost like our internalized sense of right and wrong. Then there is the ego, which sits in the middle, balancing the id's impulses and the superego's judgments, all to help us make realistic decisions in every life situations. Freud believed that the ego uses defense mechanisms to manage the constant conflict between the id and the superego. And this brings us to repression one of the most basic defense mechanisms that we use. Through repression, the ego automatically pushes threatening thoughts or painful experiences into the unconscious. Okay, so we've been talking now about forgetting and a bunch of different aspects of it, but it's not always because of interference or because our mind is trying to block memories. Sometimes we can see that forgetting is just something that happened. And to better understand our memory decay, we have to look at the work that Herman Ebbinghaus did with the forgetting curve. The forgetting curve shows us that right after we learn new information, generally forgetting happens, and we actually lose a big chunk of new information within the first few hours or days. But after that rapid drop, 
the rate of forgetting slows down and eventually levels off over time. When looking at the forgetting curve, we can see that practices such as mass practice and cramming for that test actually probably are not gonna be that effective. In fact, we're gonna forget most of the information by the time we get to the test. But if instead of cramming, you go back and review the material at spaced out intervals, focusing on your weak spots, you interrupt the forgetting curve and strengthen those memories, making them last longer. Remember, distributed practice helps us take advantage of the space effect and can help us actually decrease the amount of forgetting that occurs. This is just one of the reasons why the exam slayer has a digital exam simulator that gives you a detailed feedback breakdown on your test. I wanted you to be able to see exactly where you're struggling with within a unit so that you can refine your studies to help you focus on exactly what you need to do instead of just trying to review everything at once. All right, now so far we've talked about why memories fade and why they get blocked, but there is still another challenge that we all face when it comes to memory, and that is inaccurate or false memories. Memories often can be influenced, reshaped, or even completely made up due to processes such as the misinformation effect and source amnesia. The misinformation effect happens when information is presented to an individual after an event, ultimately changing how the individual remembers the event. For example, say you witness a crime and you hear someone mention broken glass. Later, when talking to the police, they ask you what you saw and you mention the broken glass, even though there never was any at the scene. Now, source amnesia, on the other hand, occurs when you can remember the information, but you can't remember where it came from. For example, you might be able to recall a fact that you read online, but mistakenly think that your teacher said it. Both the misinformation effect and source amnesia can create false memories due to the fact that memory is constructive. Constructive memory is the idea that memory is reconstructed and not just a replay of what happened. Whenever we retrieve memories, they are altered. We start to fill in gaps, we make changes, and maybe even add an additional element or two to the memory. So every time we're retrieving a memory, it may be altered or reshaped based on current knowledge, emotions, or external suggestions. This process of altering memories that have been recalled before they are stored again is known as reconsolidation. Okay, so we can see that memory actually isn't perfect. It fades, it can be blocked, and sometimes can it be reshaped into something that never actually happened. And we can see that this is why it's important to use strategies like distributed practice, metacognition, and utilize good encoding strategies to help strengthen our memories and make sure that they're accurate. Now, speaking of which, you can actually now go check out my memory challenge practice quiz in the ultimate review packet to test your memory and help strengthen it. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found value in the video, consider subscribing. I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.